So, thanks for bearing with me through this grounding part. Uh, I'm quite aware that grounding is quite technical. Actually, there are quite a lot of people who believe that grounding is actually more complex than solving. But you can judge for yourself once we've gone through the solving part as well. Anyway, what adds to this actually is that we have only treated uh, grounding vanilla programs, easy programs. Because before actually we come to things to remember, let's look at the list of things we ignored. And actually I don't have to go through this and, and read this to you now, but you, you see that actually there are quite a lot of parts of the input language that we haven't been looking at at all. And normally if you want to, to build a, a grounder like Roland the Builder, uh, you have to take all this into account. This is a pretty complex thing. Anyway, so this hopefully somehow gave you an idea on how grounding works and that there are still things to do and that get, things get even more complicated if one wants to have everything under one uh, roof. But anyway, let's go out of this part with some things to remember. So what is important to me for you to remember is first of all the notion of safety and how it influences bottom-up grounding. That grounding actually works along a sequence of uh, sub-programs that are actually induced by the topological order of the strongly connected components of the dependency graph. Again, you may want to look this up. Anyway, how semi-naive grounding works, but again, semi-naive grounding is a technique from databases, so we won't deepen that too much. Uh, simplifications. How do on-the-fly simplifications work? And many of them actually we made precise when looking at rule instantiation. And keep in mind that instantiating a single rule is like a whole constraint satisfaction problem. And um, as we will discuss later on when it comes to complexity, grounding, or actually the grounding procedure of Gringo at least, and also of DLV, they are Turing complete. While the solver only solves decision problems, right? So grounding is a pretty uh, expressive machinery and many problems you can actually, as challenges, also express by rules that are completely evaluated by the grounder. But sometimes these rules get really big and you really stress test the grounder. Anyway, what is also very important to take away as a, as a, as a first intuition is the impact of distinguishing between atoms that were found to be true, possible, and false. Because more or less, of, this is only the first taste of this, because when it comes to solving, we will again uh, look at these three components and solving more or less, we look at these things as well. Just that while grounding more or less walks over a program and can only do simplifications if it sees it, the solver has to resolve them all. But again, it will be a similar uh, basis with these three valued um, three-valued settings, right, that you will find more or less through the whole uh, solving section. So I think it, will, it, 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 it would be really good for you to develop a good intuition already right now on when things are true, when things are false, and when they are simply possible. Okay, anyway, this concludes this part on grounding. I hope you enjoyed it uh, despite its technicalities. And I was just happy to have Roland next to my side to, to explain some, some issues to me that I, didn't, uh, that I didn't figure out myself. Anyway, so welcome to the club. So, auf Wiedersehen, and tomorrow isn't staying out, I'll be back, without a doubt. And yeah, I'll be back in a different way, but you'll see. Bye.